G. And F, the norm of F can be estimated by A over 1 minus Q times norm of T R. So what does the conclusion is telling us? So the conclusion is telling how can I interpret the conclusion? What would be the interpretation of the conclusion? So the conclusion is telling me that for every G in F I can have an approximate pre-image actually. So it's like a pre-image. Okay. But it's an approximate pre-image. So somehow, you know. Their sizes are related in this manner. So T is not a kind of a map which is preserving the size actually. It's not preserving the size. So if it is bijective, it must preserve the size as well. Are you getting the point? So, okay, it's giving you some pre image, but their sizes are related in this manner. Is it making sense? Okay. So, an approximate subjective map is giving the approximate privileges. Okay? So that's what this theorem is telling us. So, what we are going to do next is that, you know, to prove this theorem, we will use this theorem actually. So, let's prove this first. Let's see that why this is good. Let's see that why this is true. So what essentially we have to show, we have to show that for each G, so imagine I have a, such a map which has you know, this, this property, and I have to show that for each G I can find that. For each G I can find that. Okay? So, when G is a zero, everything is trivial. Anything. This pre image is zero itself. Transformation. Okay. So the case when G is zero is a trivial case. I'm going to consider. I, mean, I would say that it is sufficient. Sufficient to consider. Say that those G's from F for which for which the norm of G is less than or equal to one. Okay. And it's sufficient to consider such a G Z. Why? Because if G is not at this kind of a map, you know, this kind of a function, then you can normalize it actually. So I can divide it by, you know, norm of it and I can always get, you know, something yes. of this form actually. So it's sufficient to just consider this case. Is it making sense? So, let me say it explicitly. So if G is from F, but imagine that this is not satisfied. Then I can consider this G actually. So it's like a G over norm of G. So this always has a norm one. less than or equal to 1. Equal to 1. Because if something is not satisfying this, I can turn it to satisfy this. So it's sufficient. If you prove things for this G. In other words, if you can prove that for such a G, there is an approximate pre-image enough. Okay? You see that I said. Okay? You see that I said. So, a set is the collection of images of those apps which are obviously in E and their norm is less than or equal to A actually. Okay? The norm is less than or equal to A. 
what does this case going to imply? Uh, if, if A is such a set, then I can, you know, precisely put this hypothesis in a very simple kind of an implication. So in other words, I can rephrase it in a simple way. And that rephrasing is going to be that for H in F such that the H is less than or equal to 1, okay, there exists that there exists an H prime, okay, H prime where in A, so in other words, H prime is image of some F actually, so in other words, I am saying that there exists some F with these properties such that TF is equal to H prime, such that, that the difference of H prime and H can be controlled by this number Q Okay. So here I have did nothing, I just rephrased this hypothesis in a more compact form. Okay. So what I would like to do? Essentially, for a given G, I have to construct an F actually. It satisfies these two things. This is what is happening. No. If H, H prime is in A, then H prime is equal to some TF for some F in here. And H prime is like this TF, which is the same thing. Okay. So why I'm doing it is basically that. I am rephrasing what is written in the hypothesis in a more compact and a precise form. Okay? So don't forget our goal that we haven't given a G with norm less than or equal to 1 and we have to construct an approximate agreement for this F in such a way that these two conditions are satisfied. Okay? The norm of F is less than equal to A. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to inductively prove an inequality. Okay. I'm going to inductively prove an inequality. And that inequality is what? That inequality is telling me that I can have a pre-image, okay, somehow. For a, for a given G. Say. Okay. So I would like to prove inductively. Okay. So we would like to, we will construct, we will construct okay. a sequence. Gn. That's important. That's important. So if Gn is in A, that means that there are Fn's satisfying such properties such that the T of Fn is Gn. Okay. But that's what we want. We haven't yet such created such Gn sets. Sequence of images. So I want to construct a sequence Gn in A such that such that this is true, that this G can be approximated by the sum, maybe the partial sum okay, equal to 1 to n and q raised to k minus 1 gk less than or equal to Okay, let's reflect upon this inequality. Let's see that what this inequality is. Showing. We haven't proved this inequality yet, but that's what I would like. So in other words, for every G, I can find a sequence in A, 
Okay, such that it's it's so okay. So G can be approximated by such a partial sums, okay, and by uh, such a number. Okay. So just think about it. So if Q is a smaller number between zero and one, then Q raised to n is even smaller. And just think about it. What if I if I take Limit and limit actually. N goes to infinity. So if n goes to infinity, okay, what's going to happen? This guy so it's like this, this partial sum is going to become a series, and it's going to approximate your g, okay? That will go to zero as n goes to infinity. Okay, so it's a pretty clever thing. But what's a good thing about these gks? These are pre images. So these are the pre images actually. Sorry, images. Sorry, these are images. 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 So okay. And for, for these we have pre images already. TSK. So we have approximated G by something for which we have pre images. Mm. Okay. And hence it is convergent. The series formed by these pre images is going to give me the element that I want actually. Mm. So you can already see that we are heading towards something actually. Okay, we are heading towards something. Let's see that why this is true. Let's see that. So I would like to prove this inductively. So for n equal to one, why this inequality is trivial? Sir, g minus g is zero. We will run up to one k one because as in g minus g one, g one. G one. G minus G G G minus G one is less than G one. G G G minus G one. Think about this is all. Is it telling you something? So I'm saying that for n equal to one, since norm of G is less than or equal to 1, so this inequality is trivially satisfied. So who agrees with me and who doesn't agree with me? I'm saying that since norm of G is less than or equal to 1, so I would say that this inequality is trivially satisfied. Why this is trivially satisfied? Is it true for all if Tf minus G is less than equal to Q? For all if? Not for all if. But for every G with such a... So see, you, you have these hypotheses actually. Just think about it. <laughs> Just think about hypothesis telling you what. So if G is an F, such that norm of G is less than or equal to F, there must be F in F such that you know, so f is less than or equal to a, hence f belongs to a, okay, and the tf minus g can be estimated by, okay, is satisfied from hypothesis, okay, now this follows from hypothesis, because what you need here, so you essentially need G minus an element from A. Which we will treat as an F. Yes, which I am treating as F. TF, T. Such that its norm is less than or equal to what we refer to Q. Because we need a Q raised to N actually which is Q. Is it making sense? Okay. Good. So it follows from hypothesis. Trivial. Alright, so what, what I would like to do next is that a 
assume n equal to k. Okay? And I would like to show, in other words, assume that such an inequality holds for n equal to k. And I would like to show that, show what? So it's true for k plus 1 as well. Is it making sense? Pretty, pretty simple. That is, that is, is what does that mean? That is that we have constructed, we have G1, G2 up to Gn such that, such that this star is true. Okay? This is star is true. that such that what this is true what is true u is to minus n times g minus uh, a equal to 1 to n q is to k minus 1 gk minus uh, n but m gm plus 1 and its norm can be estimated by q. What the heck is going on? What is going on? How's it going? What's the justification? Size. So it's like a fill the gap. Fill the gap. Sir, when we write, we will construct a sequence. तो थोड़ा सा अगर हम उसके टर्म्स के बारे में देख लें कि उसके टर्म्स किस तरह के हैं कि G1, G2, G3 उसका मतलब दो 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 हजार सात चीज़ विच सर्टिस्फाई दिस मिस्टर सो आई एम सेइंग दैट फॉर एन इक्वल टू वन दिस इज़ ट्रू एम इक्वल टू वन इज़ ट्रू ओके एंड आई लाइक टू प्रूव दिस फॉर एन इक्वल � so in other words, this inequality is true for m equal to what? K. K actually. Alright. So if this is true, what does it mean? So, so, so think about it. For m equal to k, this inequality is true. Alright. I would like to use hypothesis. What is my hypothesis is saying? Hypothesis is saying me, give me some g from f whose norm is less than or equal to 1. I'm going to give you f for which this is true. Okay? And I'm saying that for m equal to k, this is true. Okay, I can put an m here. How can I have a 1 here? Just think about it. So just, just 
divide everything by q raised to n or q raised to m, whatever. So what's going to happen? This this number is going to appear here. So I'm going to have this. What do you call expression? This expression. You forget about this part. This expression. And this expression is less than or equal to one. And this expression is where? It's in F. So I have a vector in F whose norm is less than or equal to 1. So the hypothesis are telling me that I can find another vector which is gm plus 1 such that, okay, that this given vector, okay, minus gm is less than or equal to k. So it's like, you know, something that I wrote here. Is it making sense? So now I'm saying that to so divide in this inequality by q power n and treat this whole quantity divided by q power n as g. And this g has an element in f, and that f that element has a norm less than or equal to 1. So for such an element, because our assumption is what that for every g in f which with this I can find it element in F such that this is true. So I'm going to have precisely this answer. Is it making sense? Okay. So now how can I turn this this inequality into such an inequality for M plus 1? What do you do? Uh, since we have that multiply by Q power M. Simply. So on multiplying by Q power M what are you going to get? You're gonna get g minus and uh, q power m would be multiplied with this, 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 this same thing. Uh, g m plus one, and I can then combine the sum. Total. Okay, so I'm gonna have a k equal to one plus one other m plus one such that q power k k minus one k minus 1 and gk is less than or equal to q power n plus 1. Okay? So, so that's, a, that's a beautiful example of how you can prove the existence through construction actually. So you are proving the existence of an approximate preimage but through a construction, we are constructing it, and you know such a, such proofs have more than you know, you know practical importance as well. I mean, if you are solving a practical problem, you have an algorithm with you. Just follow this algorithm, and you can get you know practically what you want. Is it making sense? Okay. So I can now safely say that this. Inequality is true in general now. Okay? This inequality is true in general. And I can also say that this sequence of partial sums, can I treat this as a you know a partial sum of a series is convergent. Can I say that's convergent? to G in this form. And hence, okay, roughly. Okay. So now now we'll be bit more precise. I would say I would like to use this inequality. So by definition of A, by definition of A, for each such gm, so like for this sequence, there exist fn, okay, okay, fn in E such that what would be the property these fn should satisfy? In other words, the pre images. Okay. That the norm of Fn's can be estimated by A and 
and what? And Pfn is equal to what? Gn. Agreed? This was the definition of A. Just, just recall your definition of A. Okay? Is it making sense? Okay? So, so you have, if you have a sequence in A, so it's like it's a collection of pre images. Okay? Then, obviously, so you're going to get a pre images such that the norms are bounded by A and they are pre images actually. Okay? Now since, since Q is a number between 0 and 1 and E is Banach space, E is Banach space, okay? So using this inequality, the conclusion from this inequality, I can say, what can I say? I can say that this series k equal to 1 to infinity okay n equal to 1 to infinity q power n minus 1 fn and I'm giving it a name f is what? is, is absolutely convergent actually Okay? Absolutely convergent. Why is the case? Uh, in addition to this absolute convergence, why? Because we have this result in, you know, as a sufficient condition for Banach space. Hmm. What is that result? So, if you use the Banach space, if you don't know, leave, okay? Absolutely convergent. Is convergent actually. Okay, so if it is absolutely convergent, it must be convergent actually. So the inequality is showing that somehow it's, you know, they're part of some sort of convergent And, and what? And, and there is something interesting. Let me do draw from here okay that if I compute the norm of f what will be the norm of f so it's like a norm of this series I can estimate this norm by the sum okay of n and maybe n equal to 1 to infinity norm of fn's times q power n minus 1 agree but I know that fn can be estimated by a so in other words this whole sum can be estimated by a into q power n minus 1 a into q raised to n minus 1 mm -hmm. which is a pretty nice geometric series geometric series with sum this must be same as a over y minus q or minus q or q minus 1 1 minus q over 1 minus k. Okay? Is it making sense? Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's one of the things that you get as a result. Alright. So can I get rid of this part again now? You see? We are gradually trying to reach where we want to be actually. So now we are in position, now we have got everything that I can give you a concrete F for which this is true. Okay, I can give you a concrete F for which this is true. true. And which, which is going to be that F actually. So the F that you have constructed here, which is kind of somehow the limit of the partial sums of F. 